Hi, everybody. It's Thursday. We're talking markets with Jim Cramer on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Our Jim, AT&T, Boeing, and Comcast sharing some of that tax savings with employees. Now, there are people who are cynical and say, obviously, this is just some gesture. I don't know. If you're making 40 Gs, it ain't a gesture. It's meaningful. And I think that sometimes I don't want to question why they do it. I just want to salute companies that give more money to the workers. And all of these have done that. Now, there's also some cynicism as to if these companies just do buybacks and dividends, but hey, as you're writing real money, that's good for stock. Well, I, I'm coming with a thesis that is reminiscent of when I, I started the street. Uh, first started paper uh, writing about it in 1995, launched in 96. Pioneer. Yes, because what we were doing is saying, look, the people have gone who own stock have gone from about 50% to 70%, and we thought it might go to 80, 90. And if that had been the case, we'd all be sitting here saying, you know what? This is the greatest thing. Buybacks and dividends could put money in the, uh, into many people's pockets. Now it's down to about 50%, so it's only putting money in half the people's pockets. And then when you look at who does own it, it is the wealthy. So mm -hmm. I think if we could educate people more financially, which is why we started the street, mm -hmm. if we could somehow get people to save more, except for the obvious, the working poor who can't, of which there are substantial, hope they benefit, um, then we would reverse that and suddenly we'd be thinking, well, you know what, putting money in people's pockets because a lot of people own stock and this is a good thing. So I'm calling for financial education out of Washington, financial education on the state and state basis so that people can take advantage of this. Otherwise, it is the cynical is true. Stocks are held more by wealthy people, but it doesn't have to be that way. We just need to educate. You also say stocks are the greatest sort of social mobility mechanism. They are. They're the greatest wealth creator in history. Um, and I think that you know, it is very hard to make this point post the um, the Nasdaq crash in 2000 uh, and post the uh, Great Recession. But Jeremy Siegel has done amazing work in stocks for the long run. A uh, friend of my dad, because they lived in the same building at uh, Side Hill Towers in Philadelphia. And that's a remarkable book, and it tells you about how much wealth is created by stocks. We got it. I mean, like, if everybody had that book, you know, it's almost like we needed, like, a handbook of how to help Americans save, because then they would take advantage of this. You just got to get more people to benefit. And that's really the issue for me. I can't change the tax code. Uh, I can't change what the companies do. But maybe we can help educate people that this may be the preferred way to create wealth. And if we do that, we really create a good ripple effect. I think a lot of people around my age are, are scared of stocks because of the 2008 recession. Scott, it Nothing makes to a be ton of sense. Of. No, but I understand because it's like living through the great crash in 29. My um, grandparents, we, we, well, we, we didn't have a lot of money, but uh, you knew when you were growing up, you just heard about the great crash, great crash, great crash. Now I'm, I'm older, but the great crash was very much in the minds of, every, of my father's generation and of course his parents' generation. And I'm afraid that's happened again. And we must work mightily to change that since people make so little money even if they compound at the treasury level. So I think that missing in all of the hoopla, Democrat and Republican, is how to get people to save better so they can take advantage of whatever the companies do. All right, well, we hope people follow this advice. Yes. Jim, let's move on to individual stocks. The finish line with some nice same store sales. Two re well, finish line, I think, can go higher. Remember, Foot Locker had one day, and then a lot of people felt it had to be over. And then there were multiple days. I think the same thing could happen in a more muted way to finish line. Obviously, Nike reports tonight. This is a good sign for Nike. But let's take a look at what they said they're doing in they're in a lot of Macy's. And they're seeing almost 3% comp store sales year over year in Macy's. Now you can say, well, everybody's going to Macy's to buy sneakers. Or you can say maybe Macy's traffic has picked up. People are looking for almost minus two comp stores for Macy's. A read through for Macy's from finish line would make you buy Macy's. And don't forget, they've got almost 6% yield and the cash flow does cover the dividend. And I think they would also benefit from tax reform, the retail sector overall. Uh, yeah, definitely. Now, if you look at Bed Bath, uh, the analysts have given up on it. They don't like it. So you could argue if if, uh, if Mr. Gannett at Macy's doesn't have a solution for the for the uh, internet and Amazon, it could be treated like like Bed Bath. And that you know, so I don't want to get people too excited. But I think you'll hear first about Com Store sales, and I don't think the analysts are as negative about Jeff Gannett, the new CEO, as they are about the group that's running. Uh, bed Bath, which they regard as the gang that could shoot straight. All right, Jim, Facebook under fire for some age discrimination and ads. What well, did you think? I mean, look, I just think it's a broader theme. The notion these very powerful companies 
uh, have to be more responsible than companies like newspapers. And I think that a lot of these companies, Facebook, I'm thinking Amazon, uh, Google, what they, uh, which now Alphabet, what they don't get is that the analogs to the old world are not respected. So let's say the New York Times did what Facebook's doing. I think they would, you know, no one would care. Um, but Facebook's so powerful, uh, every move they make is under scrutiny. And they've got to start being aware of that. They need a chief risk officer, risk being what the government might do to them. And I think there's debate over whether Facebook should be responsible for this or the employers themselves. I, I think it's the employers. Yeah. But now I, I live in a rational world. All right, Jim. Meanwhile, what do you have coming up on Mad Money tonight? Well, we have, uh, you know, there's this company called Long Island Ice Tea, which became Long Island Blockchain. Uh, very cynical move, I think. Small, small company. Um, and, and I bring that up as a segue to having American, uh, uh, to having Agnico Eagle on. Why? Because I think Americans are fascinated by blockchain. We saw a really good survey by that by Steve Weisman yesterday about that. So, well, they, you know, they're fascinated by Bitcoin, which in and the blockchain angle. And I want to find out whether Igniko feels that maybe gold is no longer this uh, storehouse of wealth as it has been for 4,000 years. I'm asking about gold's relevance, tag Nico. I also have Marty Musi on for paychecks. That's important because if there's real job creation, why were the numbers not better? Let's find out. And then I have a company called Ansys. I'm always interested in computer-aided design, computer-aided modeling, Autodesk had that weaker quarter. Uh, let's see what these guys are doing. They're spending a lot to be able to make their model better, uh, but it's been hurting their uh, core business. All right, big show tonight, Thank 6 you. p.m. Eastern on CNBC. So many more stocks to talk about. We're going to continue on actionalertsplus.com. Yes. And yeah, I really just want to emphasize, we're doing some good stuff here uh, for club members. And we just keep layering on things for club members. I'm appealing to you because you're probably, you may be a club member, maybe not. But, you know, we added a great inbox. Then we did monthly calls. Uh, and now we're doing, then we did starting to do economic bulletins besides just companies. And now we've added a TV show. Uh, I, I think you're getting pretty good value for your money. I'm having a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, Jim, thanks.